Hello class. So um, the topic for today's discussion is principles of ICN. ICN was previously known as ICBN, International Code for Botanical Nomenclature. But the use of that uh, abbreviation is now obsolete and uh, ICN is used now. ICN, however, stands for International Code of Nomenclature for F algae, fungi and plants. Now this ICN, this entire code is based upon six principles which I'm going to discuss today. And this six principles are also the fundamental basis for nomenclature. The first principle of ICN, principle one, states that botanical nomenclature is independent of zoological and prokaryotic nomenclature. The code applies equally to names of taxonomic groups, whether or not these groups were originally so treated. Uh, principle one actually is also called the straightforward principle because it, it, it straightforwardly states that botanical nomenclature has nothing to do with zoological or, prokary or prokaryotic nomenclature. Now, if, if an organism is identified as a plant, then it falls under botanical nomenclature. Okay, it falls under ICN. But if it is uh, identified as an animal or as a bacteria or whatever or any other organism, then botanical nomenclature has nothing to do with those organisms. Okay. For that very reason, we have several plant species having similar names with that of animal species for example uh, morus alba it's a mulberry plant morus uh, a group of birds called the gannet bird which also have the uh, generic name as morus so uh, we are not concerned with that okay it, it does not matter to us as a botanist about other organisms um, similarly, there's another example of ficus, which is a name given to fig species and also it's the name given to a group of gastropods in the animal kingdom. Principle number two states that the application of names of taxonomic group is determined by means of a nomenclatural type. Now, nomenclatural type is a herbarium specimen to which the name of a taxon is permanently attached. Okay, so which means that when a species is described or when a species is uh, discovered for the first time uh, before doing the nomenclature, okay, a type specimen or a herbarium has to be designated. So that will serve as a reference point for others to compare to their concept of names. So which basically means that when a, when a botanist uh, discovers a new spe specimen for the first time, they have to uh, submit a herbarium sheet okay of that specimen with the with their name okay uh, with their name that will serve as a nomenclatural type so this type principle is a whole different subject altogether which i'll be doing in the future so here is a herbarium specimen of erigeron okay so this is a holotype holotype of uh, erigeron uh, so similar herbarium sheet has to be presented or has to be submitted and uh, that will serve as a nomenclature type. The third principle is called the priority principle. It states that the nomenclature of taxonomic group is based upon priority of publication. Okay, which it basically means that if a plant specimen uh, was given two different names by two different people, the one who's, who has given the name earlier will be considered okay the name that was given has to be fulfilling all the criteria of the code it, it has to be validly and legitimately published okay so here is an example of nymphia nocholi berm f here's an example of nymphia okay this name has been given in 1768 nymphia pubescens has been given in 1799 and nymphia taurus has been given by 1872 okay so if the principle of priority has to be applied then obviously this nymphia nauchali berm f would be considered now remember that this berm f is a author author name okay and similarly wild is an author name hook is an author name and according to the principle of pri uh, priority this name would be given priority over all the other names and these two names would be given uh, would be considered as synonyms okay priorities for vascular plants starts at may 1 
1753 because this is the date when Linnaeus's species plantarum was published okay so any vascular plant which is published uh, which was published before may 1 1753 is not considered for priority the fifth principle states that scientific names of taxonomic groups are treated as latin regardless of their derivation now this principle also is also pretty straightforward because it says whatever scientific names we are going to give it has to be treated as latin whatever the source may be so i'm going to give you some examples of that so here are a few examples <clears throat> rosa indica okay although uh, rosa is a latin word itself but indica is a noun so india it it, it's, it just means that it's from india so that is why the noun india has been converted to indica which is grammatically latinized similarly the word musa is a latin word and sikkim ensis now sikkim is a noun sikkim is a name of a place but it has been latinized by adding ensis in the end similarly euphorbia and wallichi wallichi after the person's name wallich now wallich noun has been converted into latin by adding chi or and it makes wallichi <clears throat> similarly uh, the word oriza is of latin origin and sativa in latin means cultivated plants so um, so whatever scientific names we are going to give to plant species it all has to be treated as latin whatever source they might have come from either they are uh, a noun okay or it either they mean something so whatever the source uh, name has to be in uh, grammatically uh, converted to latin so here's the sixth principle which is also the last principle it is called retroactive principle which basically states that rules of nomenclature are retroactive unless expressly limited now uh, retroactive is actually a legal term okay retroactive means it is a kind of a law which takes effect from a date in the past okay past. so which means that if a if that if a particular law is passed today it can affect the decisions that were made in the past so if you have trouble un understanding that still i, I will uh, give you an example uh, that is completely unrelated to this so the in india there are certain criminal laws which are anti-retroactive okay which is opposite of retroactive which means that um, if a if a law is passed against a certain crime today okay then a person committing that crime yesterday or day before or a year ago will not be deemed guilty okay but uh, if a law is passed today against a certain crime then after that day only if a person um, commits that crime then they will be called guilty okay and so it, this retroactive is completely the opposite of that okay so rules of all the rules of nomenclature are retroactive means if today we make a certain rule okay it will be applied to all the decisions that were made in the past but unless unless now there's a you know, clause unless expressly limited so which means that unless they tell that okay so today we are making this law and this will take effect from today so unless they say that it will apply to the past so for example the principle of priority starts from 1753 now it was stated in the law that it would take place from 1753 so uh, if if they had not uh, mentioned this then the uh, priority principle would have to be applied from uh, before this date okay so that is it